Okay, so on this handout, we're going to handle the Chapter 7 material, or we'll at least get through part of it. I want to introduce the uh, genitive and dative cases. You guys are all now experts in the nominative and the accusative case cases, aren't you? You, you know them like the back of your hand. And uh, I am proud to, uh, to have had a part in that. <laughs> all right. So let's talk about the genitive case first, and then we'll look at the data. Uh, genitive case. Uh, now, this is a gross, 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 gross oversimplification. But Mounts likes to start with what's familiar, so that, that's fine by me for now anyway. Uh, we will use the genitive case, or see it used, in cases where possession is being indicated. It marks possession. It doesn't only do that, but it frequently does. And um, he introduces the concept of keywords. Keywords are little uh, helpful translation uh, tips to translate a case's semantic value. That is to say, when you come to a noun that's in the genitive case, the key word is to put the word English, the English word of, in front of that Greek noun's meaning. So, if uh, if we take the word theos as an example and put it in the genitive case. And I just said, hey, translate that. What would you translate it as? Of God. Okay, so you're using the word of along with God. Now, there is no separate Greek word of. It is the case ending itself that is representing the of notion. And it's the thea part that represents the God notion. You see that? Okay. Now, now, when we want to say something in Greek like God's word or the word of God, uh, it's going to consist of two parts, the head noun, and then that head noun will be followed by a genitive noun. Now, when I say followed by, that's most of the time. It is possible for a genitive noun to go right before the noun that it relates to. And so we'll talk about that uh, soon enough. But, uh, but just to keep things simple, I'm going to put the head noun first and then the genitive noun. So take a look here at this expression, ha lagos to theou. Say that with me. Ha to Terrific. Now, ha lagos is the head noun, and to theou is the genitive noun. It's the noun that is in the genitive case, and do you see those genitive case endings there? That upsilon. Now, note, and please note, that the head noun can be in any old case you like. The head noun can be in any case. The genitive noun, though, has to be in what case? It's got to be genitive. Otherwise, we wouldn't call it the genitive noun. So, uh, if I uh, look at this uh, example here, I know the word of God, genosko as I know, and then tan lagan tu theu. Tan lagan is the head noun. Tutheu is the genitive noun. What case is tan lagan? It is accusative. Why is it accusative case? Well, okay, that's how you know the case. That's good because of the new ending. But why did the writer use the accusative case? Because it's the direct object of the verb. Exactly. So it's accusative. Notice. These form a unit, the word of God, but the head noun uh, here is accusative case. Over here, what case is it? Halagas to theu. It's nominative, isn't it? So head noun can be any case. Genitive noun and that's related to the head noun has to be genitive. All right? And whenever you're translating it, you'll translate the head noun first, and then your sort of first inclination will be to use the word of and then the, the, the meaning of the genitive noun. Now, as you know, in English, in English to say the blank of blank, that relationship is of all sorts of possibilities. If I say, for example, the horse of Caesar, Caesar would be the genitive case. And what would Caesar's relationship be to the horse, the horse of Caesar? Possession. So I could also translate that as Caesar's horse, right? 
But if I said something like the rod of iron, is iron the genitive noun? The rod of iron? Of iron? Of? Keyword, right? Iron would be genitive case. Does that mean that iron is the possessor of the rod? No. So that's why I told you saying that the genitive marks possession is really a gross, 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 gross oversimplification. Okay? Be aware that as varied as the ways that uh, the second noun, the genitive noun, could be related to the first noun in English, it's that varied in Greek, too. And uh, we'll learn more of those as we go on. Um, I mean, yeah, so like, like, like when, when you're, well, if you take the word genitive apart and try to, you know, tease that out, yeah, yeah, I think so. But, but we, we don't want to try to say that there's literally an out of relationship. If you want to think of it this way, the genitive noun is going to qualify the head noun in some way. And there's all sorts of ways that it can do it possessive, right? The, the second noun, the genitive noun, could be the possessor of the first. In the rod of iron, the second noun is the material out of which the head noun is made. And I could have all sorts of things like that. The, you know, the, uh, the, the coat of fur would be a coat made out of fur, right? And, and stuff like that. Uh, there are things like subjective genitives and objective genitives. What are we talking about there? Well, the genitive noun could be the subject of the head noun if the head noun's a verbal idea. So the love of God would mean God's love, God's act of loving people, right? God is the conceptual subject of the love. But the love of God, of God, God could be the object of the love. I need to increase in the love of God in my life. What does that mean? It means that I need to love God more. So, there's all sorts of different ways that the genitive noun qualifies the head noun, and we're, we have to learn those and, and get comfortable with them. Anyhow, but that's just a, a basic introduction to the, the concept of genitive. Um, now, uh, under B here, we have the dative case. The dative case uh, typically marks the indirect object, and so the key word here is going to be to if it marks the indirect object, but again, he gives you some other keywords, in and with, so when you see a dative noun, you might try these other keywords out uh, also. So let's look at some examples. I threw Brad a ball, or I threw a ball to Brad. Here, Brad is the indirect object in both of these sentences. Uh, the uh, uh, Brad is the recipient of uh, some object. So I threw, I is the subject, threw is the verb, direct object is ball, Brad is my indirect object. And so, what case would Brad be in Greek? Dative case. Dative case. Now, uh, how do we translate the dative? Normally, use the word, the keyword to in English. So, I should probably put that in little quote, quotation marks. Use to plus the meaning of that noun that you find in the dative case. So, here we have Finitai to eosafe. Say that with me, everybody. Finitai to eosafe. So this is he appeared. Date of case, to eosafe. Remember how I told you that some nouns are not declinable. Yosef is a Jewish name. And so in Greek, it's not declinable here, but the article that accompanies it tells you what case it's supposed to be in, and that's data. So it's he appeared, Joseph. Well, you have to supply the word to to indicate the nature of that appearing as being to Joseph, you see. So uh, here, the dative form, the, the fact that it's in the dative allows me to use the word to, even though there's not a technically a separate Greek word that means to here. There are separate Greek words that mean to here. We'll learn the preposition soon enough. But here, just the bare date of case gives you that meaning. Now, 
Sometimes you're going to use the, the words with or in if the context will fit that meaning better than to. So look at uh, this, this text from, from Matthew. Uh, everybody say this with me. Hoi to hoi. That's a challenge. PT together. Hoi to hoi. To pneumati. So it's it's uh, not nice of mounts to give you this example because this is not a first or second declension noun, but it is a dative noun. It's just from the third declension, okay? But that's neither here nor there. This is in the dative case. How would you translate this? The poor to spirit? No, the poor in spirit is the idea here. So here that dative that dative case has the semantics of in, not to. And then, uh, also from Matthew's Gospel, uh, say this with me, or gizamanas, which means angry, to adelfo. So angry to the brother, angry in the brother. Now here, angry with his brother is the better way to say it. Now, uh, remember last week, I think it was, we talked about how the article by itself could give a possessive sense, and and that's the case here. Uh, there is no, um, there is no uh, possessive pronoun here, uh, but it probably is best to translate that as angry with his brother. All right, so those are uh, those are some, some ways to understand the semantics of the genitive and dative cases. Now, let's talk about how to form it. How do you form these puppies? Uh, genitive case. Remember, the second declension has what kind of stem vowel? The omicron. Good. So the stem will end with omicron. So how do we form the second declension case, uh, case ending for the genitive? If it's singular, it's upsilon. And if it's plural, it's own. And I want you to note here, though, that the um, the omega is going to obscure the omicron. Okay, it obscures the omicron stem vowel. What do I mean by that? Let's take the word logos here. Okay, what would be the genitive singular form? Laga, drop the sigma, add the... Upsilon, right? What would be the plural? Presumably, it would be laga plus own, but that's not actually how the form is spelled. What's it going to look like? That's right. The omicron will be absorbed, as it were, by this omega, and so you're going to see just the omega here. So, do you see the stem vowel in this own ending? No, you don't get to see the stem vowel anymore. This is going to happen in first and second declension, so we're giving you a hint already. So let's uh, go on now to the first declension, and these are <clears throat> nouns whose stem ends with... That's right. Eta or alpha stems, okay? Now, what's the genitive singular case ending for first declension feminine nouns? It's a sigma. Have we got a problem here? Houston, we have a problem. Yes, that sigma is also... Okay, if it's, if it's masculine, it can be nominative singular. But if we're dealing with feminine first declension nouns, there's also a, a sigma that's a case ending somewhere else, isn't there? That can also be accusative plural. So we're going to have to uh, talk about this. And so we'll have a little fireside chat about it in just a moment. The plural genitive ending for feminine first declensions is own. So here's the good news. This is the same as the second declension. And so the genitive plural is always own. Own, 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 own. You own this, don't you? You've got it. Excellent. So here's some examples. So everybody, logos. logos. Genitive singular, lagu. Logo. And genitive plural, lago. lago. Ergon is neuter, right? So this one's masculine. This one's neuter. They're both what declension pattern? Second declension, so ergon, ergon. that's the nominative singular, ergu, ergu, of work, right? Lagu is of word, of work, and ergon, ergon. of works, of works. 
Now, here, these are both feminine and first declension, aren't they? So, second, first. So, everybody, graphe? What's that mean? Writing or scripture, good. Genitive singular, graphes? Genitive plural, graphon. Notice that the eta has been absorbed by the omega. You cannot see the stem vowel here. So, how will you know what gender graphone is? You've got to go back to the lexical form. you got to memorize your lexical form. And you'll remember, ah, graphe, eta ending, interesting. What's the article with it? Hey, hey, graphe. That's feminine, okay? In other words, when you're in the genitive plural, uh, unless you already know the noun, you can't know, based on looking at it, what its declension pattern is. All right? Uh, and then hora is our, horas, of an hour, and horon, of ours. So there's your form of the genitive. You're looking here? Yeah. No, we've got an accent already over here. So uh, you don't put two accents on, on, on this, the same word. So once, once I've got an accent here, I'm not going to put a circumflex over these. All right. Now, let's uh, take a look at the dative case. First and second declensions show the same dative case. So this is good news. The singular dative ending is an iota, iota. And the plural dative ending is iota sigma. So you know how in English adding an S makes things plural? So maybe you can think of it that way. Iota makes it dative singular, add an S to the iota, makes it dative plural. All right? Now, there is a peculiarity in forming the dative singular here, and this is uh, where we have to pause a little bit. The dative singular ending is going to behave this way. The final stem vowel is going to lengthen. So what are the stem vowels for our first and second declension so far? First declension vowels, stem vowels are? First declension are alpha and eta. Second declension, stem vowels, omicron, right? Is the eta long or short? The eta is long. So when I say that the final stem vowel lengthens, that's only true if the final stem vowel is short. So it's the omicron and the alpha which will lengthen if they're data singular. Okay? So omicron to lengthen becomes an omega. Short O, long O, right? Omicron, micro O, right? Mega O. And then the short alpha can become a long alpha. Remember, alpha could be long or short, so it's hard to tell the difference there. Eta will stay eta because it's already long. Uh, then the iota, that is the data singular case ending, is going to subscript or slide under that lengthened stem vowel. That's called an iota subscript, and together it forms what's called an improper diphthong. Remember that. We will not pronounce that iota. It won't make a difference in, in the, the pronunciation. Okay, so take a look at our examples here. I'll raise this up just a little bit. So logos has an omicron stem vowel. And what do omicrons become when they need to lengthen? They become omega. So it would have been laga, add the iota, change that to omega, but then this iota is going to subscript under that omega. And so you see the subscript there. In the dative plural, that does not happen. So the short omicron stays right where it is. Lagois. Lagois. So say this with me. Lagos. A word. Lago. To, in, or with a word. And lagois would be to, in, or with words. Plural. Aragon is a work. Ergo is to, in, or with a work. Ergois is to enter with works. Graphe 
becomes graphe. Notice I'm not pronouncing that iota. So it sounds just like that, doesn't it? Graphe with the iota subscript. So in with or to scripture. Graphice is in with two scriptures, plural. Notice the alpha is short here, right? We'll talk about that in just a moment. Hora is our. Hora and the data singular is into or with an hour. Good. And horice is in to with hours, plural. Now, what I, what I want you to see is that uh, here, uh, if I have an ADA, and I think I mentioned this the last time we were together, if you have an ADA that uh, is in the lexical form, your first declension noun has a stem vowel ADA, uh, it's going to be ADA throughout the singular forms. It will switch to the alpha in the plural forms. If you start with alpha in the singular forms, then you're going to retain the alpha through the plurals. So to put it another way, whether you start with eta or start with alpha in the, in the singular, everything goes to alpha in the plural, no matter what. Okay? And so we'll see that pattern here as we look at this next handout.